everyone this video is a tutorial on how to fix a fault on a Briggs and Stratton 40301 7 kilowatt uh, generator standby generator um, it's important to note that the uh, generator control panel which is the uh, it's actually what I repaired is uh, also common to a lot of other Briggs and Stratton um, generators um, you'll find it on larger generators um, and also generators of a different uh, format, different configuration. If your generator panel looks like the one in this picture, uh, that generator control panel is a 311353DS, and your generator runs continuously, even when the utility power is restored, then you came to the right place uh, to potentially repair the panel. My generator is, as I have mentioned, a Briggs and Stratton 40301. It's a seven kilowatt unit, fairly small. Um, I've had a couple of these generators. They work very well. Um, mine's about 10 years old, maybe a little older. It was originally sold as a model 1978. Now it's called a 40301. I'm not sure if they make them or sell them anymore, uh, but I already mentioned if your panel looks like this and you're having the same fault where the generator runs even when utility power is present, it is, uh, it is possible that the repair that I am uh, talking about today will work for you. So the full description, when utility power is present, the generator runs persistently. Uh, the indicator lights in, on the transfer switch inside the house, um, you probably know that there's a red one that shows the generator is running, uh, and a green one when the utility power is present. Uh, they both stay, uh, and they both light up and they stay light, uh, lit up indicating that power is present from the persistently running generator and utility power simultaneously. What's supposed to happen is the generator is supposed to shut down after a few minutes. Resetting the controller by shutting off the generator, uh, that will be setting the standby uh, or off standby off switch to the off position and turning off the 240 volt breaker and removing the fuse for 30 seconds or more uh, and then restoring uh, to operation by reversing all of those steps doesn't fix the fault. Uh, the generator just starts up again and keeps running even when utility power is present. Um, the generator continues to run persistently even after a few minutes, uh, typically five, uh, which is what the uh, utility power has to be present for, uh, I think two to five minutes in order for the um, transfer switch to detect a utility power. This is obviously not normal. Uh, and so I'm gonna suggest uh, that you take a look at the controller See if you have the same problem that I had. The repair that worked for me, um, I took the front panel off after, of course, removing the fuse, turning off the power, shutting off the main breaker, disconnecting the battery, and making sure that there was no 240 volt present anywhere. It's extremely important that you do that first. Um, but if you get behind the panel, uh, there's four screws to remove the panel. Um, you can uh, gently pry the panel from the front of the generator. The controller has uh, a bunch of connectors on it. There's an eight pin connector plug shown in the white inset on the left. There's a 10 pole connector plug, which is really for controls on the right hand side. And then there's this uh, smaller 240 volt connector plug, which is two pins from the utility source. And that actually comes from the transfer switch. Now that, when the system control panel senses 240 volt utility power of this connector, the controller is supposed to shut down the generator after a few minutes. If this connector is loose or disconnected, the controller can't sense the utility power is present. So the generator thinks that there's been a power failure. Um, your problem may be just a matter of reconnecting that uh, connector. Um, if it's come loose, perhaps like mine, it came loose after you know 10 years of use. But in my case, my controller was made with insufficient clearance for the connector to be fully inserted. So it probably made a reasonably good connection for a little while, but after 10 years, it's popped out. And pushing it back in doesn't seem to restore uh, adequate connection. So by filing a small notch on the board edge, the connector can be fully uh, seated, restoring the sensing um, of that 240 volt on the control board. So I filed the board to be flush with the connector. Um, it was about two or three millimeters of board removal, and I did it over a wide enough uh, distance that the connector can be reseated fully inside the connector. You can't see the connector on this side um, because it's the, on the other side of the board, but I wanted to show you this side because that's where I cut the knot. So um, the left-hand side actually shows the full board, the location of the 240 volt connector. 
on the right hand side you can see the inset uh, there is the slot that I cut and I'm going to show you a close up on the next uh, next slide this is a before and after you can see the original board uh, you can't actually see the connector because the connector is behind underneath these two solder solder bumps um, and uh, on the right hand side you can see what I did I cut a notch I actually used a like a Dremel tool to do this and I cut the notch uh, filed the notch so that it would allow the edge of the board to be flush with the connector receptacle on the other side so that's the before and after that's the end of uh, my uh, presentation shows that uh, if you if you do this like me if you did have a connect problem and 240 volts not being sensed when you put the system back together and reactivate my my generator is now shutting down after about five minutes uh, and it's operating normally I hope uh, the same uh, applies to you and I hope this fix uh, helps you out take care